one that we're hosting together. Exactly, yeah, because we're doing a handover as well. Yes. Okay. We'll have a new set of hosts uh, yeah. after this session. Oh, it was so nice. It was wonderful. Thank but you. there will be another VACD, right? Because right. we already invited well, Esther. Put, so. Maybe the other hosts will be fine as well. Like, yeah. Let's mm. give them a chance. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. fair. All right. <laughs> Next up, um, Jonah shares her insights about gender inequality problem in the tech and IT industries. Why is inequality a problem and what can we do to fix it? Jonah Anderson is a Filipina Swedish software developer and IT consultant at Forefront Consulting. Jonah studied computer science and agile development, uh, system development. She enjoys solving challenging complex problems like the gender imbalance in tech and developing applications full stack in csharp.net. Welcome, Jonah. So it's a great privilege for me. Awesome, even better. Cool, we're happy to have yes. you. Yeah. Can you hear me well? I just want to do an audio check. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Go ahead. Yes, great. Okay, so I'll just share my screen. Oh. Can you see my screen yes. now? Perfect. Yes. So, okay. Uh, so today I would like to uh, share with you uh, a, a talk about uh, gender inequality, why I think it is a problem and what can we do to fix it? And this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and I really want to advocate to our industry. So let me start by telling you a story about uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Jonah Anderson. I'm a software developer at Forefront Consulting. Forefront Consulting is an IT consulting company with uh, about 400 employees in seven offices in Sweden. And uh, to start uh, with, let me share you my journey to tech. Um, Originally, I am from the Philippines. I grew up in the Philippines. And when I was young, I wanted to be an engineer. It's because uh, I enjoyed uh, sketching uh, buildings and uh, and helping people build uh, modern homes uh, then. And uh, because of economic uh, circumstances uh, back then, my parents, uh, we were in the middle uh, middle class uh, family. My parents couldn't afford to send me to school uh, to study engineering. And uh, in the Philippines then, uh, it is not free to go uh, get a degree in college or university. So what I did is uh, I took the initiative to took a, take a community test where I had opportunity to take a scholarship and study computer science. So in year 2001, that, that's when I started my journey doing and in, uh, getting into programming. Uh, so my first programming language was, I believe, uh, was, uh, I remember back then, was uh, written in a tube computer in Windows 98 operating system. And uh, it was uh, Visual Basic was my first language. And I also remember the three and a half floppy disk with uh, small size uh, storage in it and also learned about binary codes, logic gates. So after computer science, I, uh, I worked in different branches uh, uh, in different industries. And then when I moved to Sweden nine years ago, I decided that I really want to pursue my passion in technology. And I really like working with computers and uh, modern tech. So I studied uh, for three to four years uh, more about agile system development in C-sharp.net and even in Java. So looking back from 2001 to, uh, to today, I am working from tube computers to multiple flat screens computers in uh, modern technologies like Azure in modern languages like C-sharp. So let me share to you a story that uh, I cannot forget. Uh, uh, when I started my career in tech, uh, I was on my interview, a job interview in which I was uh, I was invited to do a programming tests. And the first interview went well, and the programming test was the second one. So when I when I was invited in that interview, 
I was in a room with two or three uh, programmers. Uh, I was prepared and I, I received uh, a programming test to do. And uh, I was, uh, they, were si they were sitting, uh, they were in, at the back of me while I was answering my lines of code with that programming test. So I was uh, kind of intimidated and I lost focus and I, and to make the long story short of that scene, I, I felt very nervous that I quit and I didn't uh, continue that programming test. And I came home asking myself, is programming really the kind of job that I really want to do? Is uh, tech really the, the kind of like industry that I really want to work for in my entire life? But I, I thought to myself, I really want to work with computers and I want to make a difference. So I didn't make that situa situation a hinder in fulfilling my dream to, to become a software engineer or a software developer. And I would like to share to you, when I started working, I, I like reading facts or statistics on the internet. And I noticed that uh, there are, uh, we have challenges when it comes to gender in inequality. Uh, we know uh, uh, that women are still underrepresented in tech in most of the major companies. And when I see this picture of uh, a woman uh, dominated by male, I can really relate to it because sometimes working in as the only software developer in the team sometimes makes me feel uh, uh, left out or alone. So I really want uh, to advocate that uh, we need to make changes on these problems. And and then uh, in year 2002, there was a, a 2013, there was a survey that um, in GitHub, they had, uh, women had to hide their gender to have their pull requests approved. And I think uh, that is uh, that is not good to hear for me as a, a female developer because uh, because we are in a modern world and I believe that we should have the freedom to di disclose who we are regardless of our gender. So uh, uh, I believe it, this is something that I wanted to share with you. And then there was also an, a project uh, called uh, Gender Shades. Uh, I'm not sure if you have read of it, but if you want to check it out, there's a website for that, uh, gendershades.org, in which uh, they uh, it, it was a project that evaluates the accuracy of AI in uh, class, class, classification products. And we still have a challenge of AI misunderstanding the face and of the female subject. So there's still a high rate of error there. So let me, uh, so I asked my question, uh, I, I had a lot of questions about uh, these things that I read online and me working in tech, and I, com I can completely relate to it. And I dig deeper and uh, search what uh, gender inequality really means. Uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to involve it with feminism because uh, I believe being equal is 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 the freedom and uh, and gender inequality uh, as uh, its description it's being treated as equal regardless of gender and then I would like to share it with you the a favorite quote that I have of Albert Einstein that if everyone is genius. Uh, Everybody is genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will leave itself. Uh, it it will leave its whole life believing that it's stupid. So just like also uh, females, if they were told that they are less than a man, then they will spend their life, uh, whole life, believing that they are. So. I personally identified some challenges that I see in our uh, tech industry right now that I believe that we need to face and try to solve. Uh, first is uh, we have a trend of gender stereotypes, uh, gender bias in AI learning and machine learning. 
And unfortunately, we have high rates of women leaving tech jobs, not because of uh, that they're not competent with the job that they're doing or not skilled enough. That's because they are not comfortable with the company culture. And most of the research study, uh, research done, uh, what is the cause of this? It's because they... Uh, the the women doesn't feel uh, accepted for who they are at the workplace and we also we lack uh, female programmers it's because we have a sort shortage of uh, female role models and we also have uh, unfortunately we have uh, a problem of discrimination in workplace and I personally is uh, is a living testimony to that and that is a separate story but uh, I see it as a challenge as well. And we need to have, we need to build a future that is sustainable and that requires uh, diversity and di with different ideas. And our, our uh, digital skills, along with our modernization, digital skills are also essential. So we need to act now and do something about it, at least try to do something about it. It's not easy because uh, we have, uh, there are challenges for that. Uh, but uh, I believe uh, that tech companies should create or start creating a gender equal uh, uh, and inclusive diverse workplace. This means that we a technical role, for example, like programmer or tech lead doesn't have to be connected or uh, con doesn't have to be connected to a gender. So a male or a female or anybody can be a great programmer without uh, specifically identifying it to a specific gender. And then we need to uh, raise uh, better uh, awareness of equality in our workplace so that women a uh, few women working in tech feels comfortable and they don't want to leave uh, the company or the organization. And we also need to encourage female role models. Um, we have a shortage of role models and that is a great barrier in uh, uh, achieving the equality in our branch. Uh, for example, there was a study done by uh, PwC uh, in UK Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, in UK, and um, uh, there were females. Uh, there were interviewed. Uh, they were interviewed and were asked about their favorite uh, female uh, role model working in technology, and they don't know anybody. Eighty-three percent of the respondents don't know anybody. So this means that we need to. We women in tech need to get out of our closets and uh, we need to get out there and inspire others because we need each other, uh, not just not just men, men and women should help each other. And here also uh, we need to uh, inspire technology uh, to the younger generation. This is me uh, on this picture. Uh, when I was involved in teaching uh, programming to kids uh, using Scratch and uh, uh, Tinker and some robot programming. And I did this on the side of my job as a programmer. And I believe that we can make a difference by inspiring technology to our younger in, in generation. And that starts at home, in school, and even us technologies uh, can, uh, can make a difference by sharing about our knowledge and the good thing about this tech stuff to the, our kids and to the younger generation that we met, met or get a chance to get and connect with. And also as developers uh, and uh, people working in the IT field, we need to build applications and technology products and solve problems with equality in mind. This means that when we build applications and services, we think of uh, others too. Uh, we think of different genders and different gender diversity in our end users and uh, uh, that will use our products. And then it all starts with leadership and good leadership. So if our leaders uh, don't understand the importance of diversity and the benefits of it, 
then uh, it will we will still have the same problem. So it is important that our organization leaders understand the importance of diversity, not because not just for the sake of having equal men to women ratio, but it also improves our workplace, like faster problem solving, increased creativity, and there will be uh, reduced employee turnover. And also uh, create a safety, uh, collaborative learning environment for everyone. So when I was uh, starting uh, in technology, I had to really work hard to, to try to level up with my fellow male uh, programmers. So, uh, so this is important for junior developers that when they start in a company and you, you, they need to, to feel that they are, they are welcome and they get the, the, the support that they need from other uh, other developers. And then uh, diversity and tech talks that like we're doing right now, uh, virtual Azure community uh, day uh, are welcoming me, including myself and other women to talk uh, about, uh, to talk about tech. And I believe this is something that we need to do more hackathons and even in uh, programming events. And what am I doing then to help fix the problem? So I volunteer. I volunteer to inspire and mentor a different women, women, young women, old women who wants to get to in, get into tech. So regardless of ages, it's not too late to to get into tech. And I am involved in several uh, organization in here in Sweden and even internationally and volunteer to do mentorship when I have free time. And when I have a chance, I inspire tech to others and my friends. And I'm also part of the gender equality group at my workplace where we're trying to, to advocate and uh, make changes in our organization that we will be more equal uh, more developers and make a difference that way uh, here in our country. And lastly, we shouldn't forget the women that made a difference back then in order to create the modern computing that we have today. Um, uh, we have the INIAC women, uh, we have uh, Grace uh, Hopper and even uh, uh, Lady Ada Lovelace. So let's inspire and motivate to have more of them in our industry today. And lastly, um, equality is uh, freedom, and it is the freedom to be ourselves and to be valued for that. And if you have questions, you can contact me on uh, this contact information. And I would like to thank you for the opportunity to talk. Tusen tak in Swedish, and maramin salamat in Filipino. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Jonah, yes. for, for highlighting all these these challenges. Uh, I can definitely get behind all of those. I, I do recognize uh, them. Um, <laughs> and definitely, uh, representation matters in, in this in this case. So uh, we have to uh, make women and people who identify as, as yes. women uh, more and more visible. Um, so you, you mentioned you, you were actually mentoring in, in some uh, programs to, to, to make a difference. Yes. Do you know of any other initiatives, um, uh, either locally or more globally, that we can point people to to, to learn more about this? And, uh, to to help more? Yeah, sure. Uh, as uh, I had in my slides, uh, there's uh, locally in Sweden, we there are a few like uh, Technik Quinor, uh, Data Datashe, and uh, locally in my city, I have the Guidance Network where I get to meet the, the women studying programming and uh, they we meet online because it's Corona or COVID right now. So we meet online. I inspire them. They ask questions. How does it work? Uh, does it, how does it mean to work in a, in a, as a programmer? What are the challenges? What's the difference between working in an IT consulting company compared to working directly in a product company, for example? directly in Microsoft. So I have that questions. And this is, I'm really passionate about it. And I'm very glad I have the opportunity to talk about it because um, we need uh, role models 
to to make a difference. And if women out there who are very good programmers are just hiding in their closet and, and just don't want to show up, then we we don't we won't we we don't inspire others. So and I was also teaching kids programming, and I cool. noticed that uh, in my class I had like twenty. 10 or 15 class in, in that in school, I noticed most of them are boys. And then I, there were like two or three um, girls. And I noticed that they were not so interested in learning about scratch and black programming. And I asked them why. And then I tried to inspire them. But they were too busy with Instagram and other things like that. So we need to make, change that. <laughs> cool. Agreed. Yeah. Um. <laughs> The, the, the one initiative I can think of right now is uh, Global Diversity CFB Day. Yes, which is coming up January yes. 23rd. Exactly. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, uh, that's 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 good good to mention. Um, and yeah, especially you, when you talk about representation, I mean, I think it's good if yeah. if, if people get yeah. more comfortable with public speaking. And Global yes. Diversity CFB Day is definitely a great. Yeah, event. lots lots of mentors uh, doing yeah. Yeah. Uh, offering their free time and uh, giving help. Yeah. yeah, cool. And just one day before, yeah. because that will be an online event as well. And I think that's one of the the, the key key things uh, this year, and I think that's that's been good in terms of accessibility. Also, is uh, yes. C sharp? Uh, I get it. C sharp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, I think very, sharp. Okay. Yeah. I think it's very yeah. clever. Clever. Uh, they'll yeah. do a community day on January twenty second. Uh, so that's yeah. Uh, I can share the link that in the chat later. That is good. Be good. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Many yeah, thank you so example. much uh, for. Uh, I, I I I'm really glad that, glad that you uh, you well, I, I got this opportunity to speak. Cool. In this well, event, it was great and to I have hope you. there will be more, so I can inspire others. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Go for it. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was it for us as well. E- we exactly. Have, we want to plug, I think, the challenge one more time. Yes, exactly. What was the link? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm like a proper YouTuber. slash VACD challenge. That, that, that's the link, right? Yeah. Okay. Don't like and subscribe. They're just like. Oh, oh no, no, no. That, that, that's that's, <laughs> my, that, that's my, other, my other YouTuber <laughs> thing. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And do so. We'll have a little break coming up. So this is actually the perfect moment to check out the challenge uh, and maybe get started with uh, completing some of the modules. Uh, and uh, then our, our next host will take over. Excellent. Okay. Thanks again, Mark. Thank you all for, for Thank you. And, uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Stay tuned. Enjoy. Bye, everyone.